Frederick Sanger was born to a well-to-do family on August 13, 1918, in the small village of Redcombe, England. He and his siblings were raised as Quakers. Sanger's early education was provided at home by a governess, then from the age of nine, he attended independent schools. Frederick Sanger was a bright student and qualified to do his undergraduate work in the natural sciences at St. John's College, Cambridge. While an undergraduate, he lost both of his parents to cancer. Sanger was a conscientious objector during World War II and was exempted from active military duty due to his Quaker faith. He spent some time serving as a hospital orderly and then returned to academics, pursuing a PhD at Cambridge. He was awarded his degree in 1943 for his thesis work on the metabolism of lysine. Next came the work which would earn Sanger the first of his two Nobel Prizes in chemistry. Sanger joined the lab of Albert Charles Chibnall, who had done some preliminary work on the amino acid composition of insulin. In those days, insulin was one of the few proteins readily available in a purified form, so it was a favorite subject for research by biochemists. Sanger used a combination of multiple laboratory techniques, including chemical digestion, electrophoresis, and chromatography to determine the amino acid sequence of insulin. He also established that insulin was composed of two chains joined together by disulfide bonds. Before Sanger's work, it was not clear that proteins had a defined sequence. His groundbreaking discovery was recognized by the Nobel Committee in 1958. Molecular biology was now coming into its own as a field of study. James Watson and Francis Crick had published their paper on the structure of DNA in 1953. Sanger's work on protein sequencing prompted Francis Crick to formulate the sequence hypothesis. That is, that the sequence of nucleotides in the DNA determines the sequence of amino acids in the protein. Furthermore, the sequence of amino acids dictates the final shape the protein will fold into. It became clear that the sequence of the genetic materials RNA and DNA were essential to understanding this process. In 1962, Sanger became the head of the protein chemistry division of the Laboratory of Molecular Biology at Cambridge. In this lab, he tackled the problem of sequencing RNA with some variations of his methodology used to sequence protein. This proved quite a challenge, especially since RNA is so fragile. Another research group from Cornell won the race to successfully sequence a tRNA molecule. But by 1967, Sanger's group was the first to sequence a molecule of rRNA from a bacterial ribosome. Sanger's lab then turned to the holy grail of molecular biology to sequence DNA. Sanger mimicked the replication of DNA using DNA polymerase and radioactively labeled nucleotides. Using this method, Sanger and his group sequenced the first complete genome in 1977, that of bacteriophage Phyx174. Sanger went on to develop a more efficient technique for DNA sequencing, using modified DNA nucleotides, which terminated the DNA strand during synthesis, creating fragments of different lengths. We call this technique the Sanger method, and it is one of the DNA sequencing methods still commonly used today. Sanger and colleagues used this technique to sequence human mitochondrial DNA, the first human genes to be sequenced. For this invaluable development, Sanger was awarded his second Nobel Prize in 1980. He retired three years later, having made an indelible mark on the field of molecular biology. Frederick Sanger died November 19th, 2013 at the age of 95.